there's so much going on right now in the world of football, all happening off the field, that I decided to combine what's going on with college football and the sharp decline in the NFL's ratings this past week into this one video. We're going to start with the situation right now in college football, more specifically the SEC. I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes on it. Then we're going to get into what's going on with the television ratings in the NFL. I don't talk college football on this channel because I don't watch it. I was a huge fan of college football growing up, but once I got into my 30s, it, it kind of lost its appeal. I realized that I was wasting my Saturdays watching boring, uncompetitive games for the most part. Now, I don't have much free time as it is. Most of us don't. So why would I waste half of my weekend watching games between teams that I don't care about, where in most cases, the game is over by the first or second quarter? But I couldn't stay silent with what's been transpiring this week in the SEC. Now, I'm sure the news that broke this week with all the canceled or the postponed games, I'm sure it gave brother woke Max Kellerman the biggest chub he's ever had. But for those of you that are diehard SEC fans, this is the worst situation college football has seen all season. And the problem is, it is all self-inflicted. These damn COVID protocols in college football are absurd. Before I get into specifics, let me just preface it with this. Just so you get an idea of how ridiculous this is. There have been zero reports globally of anyone being infected with the COVID while participating in a sporting event. Zero, okay? Zero. Now, more importantly... It has been proven countless times that the COVID has little to no effect on college-aged athletes, or people under 70 for that matter. Yet, the SEC and the media are in a full-blown panic mode right now. Four games were postponed in the SEC this weekend. Georgia-Missouri was postponed because Mizzou had two positive tests. Two! Two out of, I don't know... 140, 150 players? Two. Tennessee, Texas A&M, postponed because of three positives. LSU, Alabama, four. The media is calling these outbreaks. Outbreaks. An outbreak. On what planet does two positive tests constitute an outbreak? The media is hyping this up like SEC football is a super spreader event. Super spreader, another ridiculous term that I am tired of hearing. It ranks right up there with social distancing on the list of terms that I'm tired of hearing about every single day. Let me get into the college football contact tracing protocols because this is some of the most ridiculous guidelines that I've ever seen. Basically, if a college football player comes in contact with someone who tests positive for the COVID, they have to quarantine for two weeks, it's mandatory. Even if that player is testing negative, they've got a quarantine. What the hell's going on here? The NFL only requires five days. The quarantine period doesn't make any sense. Why are we quarantining players that are testing negative? More importantly, why are we postponing college football games when just one or two players test positive? They're testing positive for a virus that has been proven to have little to no effect on their age group. Not only is contact tracing ineffective, it is killing college football. Don't take my word for it. Listen to Todd Berry, Executive Director of the American Football Coaches Association. Quote, The contact tracing is killing us. All of a sudden, the coaches are calling me. They tell me that one kid got it, and 12 are out for contact tracing, and none of the 12 even ever had it, end quote. Does that make any sense to you? Check this out. How many high-risk players that they contact trace do you think ended up testing positive? I give you a hint. Zero. There is no evidence of any player that's been quarantined due to contact tracing eventually testing positive for the COVID. 
maybe I'm being a bit conspiratorial here, but this all just reeks at an attempt at total control. This entire Kobe issue, from the beginning, it seems to me it's been an experiment to see how much freedom we are willing to give up. How far can politicians push the American people before they start pushing back? The far left in this country, they've been trying to take away football for years. It's too dangerous, they say. The Covey was the perfect excuse to outright ban football, at least for one season. And believe me, they damn sure tried or are trying. Led by idiots like Max Kellerman, they did their best to cancel college football this year, and they almost accomplished it. When the SEC, when the SEC begins to overreact to the Covey, you know college football's in trouble. The SEC led the NCAA in playing through this pandemic. Now it seems like they're beginning to backpedal. And I understand the, the liability issues. I get all that. But at some point, someone's got to stand up and say enough is enough. We can't hide in our homes until the COVID goes away. Ask the people in Europe how that's working out. Lockdowns don't work. The NFL, to me, they've handled the COVID just about as good as you can. They don't overreact. Player tests positive. They go on the injured list. League keeps it moving. For the most part, anyway. We have had some games get postponed, but the majority of the NFL season has went on as planned. Let's go ahead and go ahead and get into the NFL and their television ratings. A couple of weeks ago, I came on here and said that we were starting to see an uptick in NFL ratings. Well, now things are heading in the opposite direction. The ratings came in for week nine last week. It was a complete disaster. Monday night football, down 30%. Sunday night football, what was slated as the biggest game of the week, one of the biggest games of the season, really. Breeze and Brady, down 25%. Both Fox and CBS, down double digits. The NFL averaged about 15 million viewers a game last week. They topped out at nearly 23 million for Pittsburgh Dallas, bottomed out at about 10 million for Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football has been suffering for a while now. I don't know if it's because people are just not watching ESPN because they're tired of it, or it's the quality of the games. Maybe a little bit of both. I was a bit surprised when the ratings came out for Week 9. We had been seeing some gradual increases throughout the year. Week 8 was one of the best weeks of the season in terms of television ratings for the NFL. The league saw increases in four out of the six nationally televised games. Now, I'm not sounding the alarm here. The NFL's far from being in trouble. These are still solid numbers. They're, they're nowhere near in the type of situation that the NBA finds themselves in. But it still should be somewhat concerning for Roger Goodell. The league has pretty much left politics in the rearview mirror since week one. But they did something this week in the name of racial equality. And I'm not sure of the effect, if any, it's going to have. The NFL approved a plan to reward teams with third-round compensatory draft picks if they lose a minority assistant coach or a minority coordinator who leaves to go somewhere else to become a head coach. The idea behind this is that teams will be more willing to develop minority coordinators or assistant coaches into becoming head coaches. It's kind of an add-on to the Rooney Rule, which requires teams to interview at least two minorities for a head coaching position. Now, is this new policy that the NFL is implementing, is it going to be effective? I don't know, but I've, I've got my doubts. Look. I understand what the NFL is trying to do here. Their heart is in the right place, but the Rooney Rule has been an abject failure. Why? Because you can't regulate behavior. It's not possible. If you could regulate behavior, we wouldn't have any crime in this country. And I also, I feel like this is a bit of pandering by the NFL. I feel like they're folding a little bit to media pressure. The NFL has been looked at by the far left in this country as being racist for years because 75% of the players are African American and there are only four African American head coaches in the league. There's a similar pattern with general managers. Now look, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors in these front offices when 
uh, teams are making hiring decisions. I don't know. But what I do know, owners of NFL teams, they're interested in two things. Winning, making money. And they go hand in hand. They're looking to hire someone who's the most qualified head coach, regardless of their race. And think about this for a second. There are only 32 head coaching positions in the NFL. African Americans make up 13% of the American population. They also hold 13% of the head coaching positions in the NFL. I mean, that seems about right if you look at it strictly from a demographic perspective. Even though I do believe the NFL has good intentions with this, this is a slippery slope. What comes next? How come there aren't more Chinese Americans in the NFL or Hispanic Americans in the NFL? Where does it end? Like I said, owners make personnel decisions based off of one thing, winning. Can this guy help us win? That's it. Now let me ask you something. Turn this around for a second. Is the NFL racist because only 25% of the players in the league are white? What if they instituted a rule that pushed teams to draft or hire more white players at, I don't know, wide receiver or running back or cornerback or linebacker? Can you imagine the backlash in the media if the NFL did that? The majority of NFL players are African American because they're the best athletes. Not everything is about race all the time. We all have different skill sets. We all have different advantages. Everyone is not equal. That is a myth. We are created equal, but after that, there is no equality. You might be a superior athlete. You might be a superior writer. I might be a superior coach or a scientist. You get my point. Three or four years ago, I would tell you that this new rule would have zero impact on the NFL's TV ratings. But today, I don't know. I don't know. I think most people are sick and tired of hearing about race. Black, white, Hispanic, doesn't matter. I think most people are tired of the media playing the race card all the time. I thought we were at a point where we were going to start seeing consistent increases in the NFL's ratings. But now, I'm not so sure. They could decline every week the rest of the year. Clearly, there are a lot of people that are turned off by the league for one reason or another. What I do know is a huge chunk of the sports audience is tired of the wokeness. I know that. And until these sports leagues quit being woke, they're going to continue to lose portions of their audience. All right, that's all for today. Hit that like and subscribe button. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Leave me a comment in the section below. What do you guys think of the Kobe protocols in college football? Are they killing college football? And also... Let me know what you think about the NFL's new policy. Do you think it's going to be effective? Or is it more pandering to the media? And will it have an impact on the league's television ratings? Let me know your thoughts. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. If you have any questions, a topic you'd like me to discuss, you can email me at btlkc84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time.